Hello everybody, James here and welcome to part 6 of the Build the Enterprise D series here on the channel. So, today we've got some exciting stuff, and I feel like I kind of say that every video, but that is because I am genuinely excited every single um, time we do one of these videos to show off what we are doing. Um, in the last one, we completed the skeleton of the source section. So it only makes sense for in this um, video, we're going to start grafting some of the items onto the source section, as well as a myriad of other stuff. I'll show you everything we've got for this one. But let's just take a quick look at the magazine. So this is going to cover stages 19 through to 22. Now, I've read through the magazine already, just to preempt this, just to see what we're dealing with, because the bags I've got, there's four bags, and they're quite sizable. So I'm thinking, depending on where we are, um, how long it takes me to record it, I might split this into two and do two parts in one video, two parts in the next, and then release them one week after the other. It just kind of depends on how long it's going to take per stage. Um, stage 19, as you can see there, we get quite a few. Uh, bits and pieces. We've got stage 20, which comes with its fair share of pieces, and you'll start to see we're getting a lot more of the little panels to go around the saucer section. Stage 21, we get more sections. And stage 22, we get more. So there's going to be a lot of windows, a lot of LEDs to deal with in this particular stage. I'm not quite sure how long it's going to take in total, um, but we'll just, we'll see, we'll play it by ear, and like I say, what I might do is maybe 1920 in one video, 2122 in another video, um, or we might just make a, lo a liberal amount of jump cuts in there, because like I mentioned before, when it comes to doing these panels, you've seen me put the windows on them once or twice, but it is a tedious process, it does take quite a lot of time it's not really the most entertaining thing to watch and my whole thing here really is to show you what this is like at the end of it and a little bit of the building process but only really newer things so we'll just take a look at the stage as I go through so stage 19 in this stage next new and previously assembled hull panels start to form a superstructure around the upper source of skeleton so we're building another panel And the backing on there and then we're going to start threading stuff through onto the saucer section itself which concerns me a little bit but as you can see stage 19 is a really sizable stage it's quite a lot of pages and then we get more of this what they call the cobra uh, bit the battle um, section skeleton and we go on to stage 20, so the saucer section is four hull plating stretches from deck 3 to deck 8. That's only two pages. Stage 21, uh, we install a new battery box to the battle section of the Enterprise D. Add another section of the hull, saucer section's dorsal hull. And that's quite a sizable bit. And we get a new battery box for this to hit, fit onto the battle bridge area. And then stage 22... We power up the Cobra head for the first time after hiding its batteries underneath the magnetized battle bridge assembly. So, as you can see, there is a hell of a lot going on with this one, hence my thinking. But we maybe split this one into two videos and also help make it um, each one a bit more digestible. Um, but yeah, that's what we're going to get. And I'll show you the bags we get. So this is all of stage 19. So I mentioned quite a lot there. This is stage 20. Again, quite a bit. Stage 22 doesn't seem to be as much, but still. Stage 22, quite a lot of sections there. So there's quite a lot going on here. So what I'll do is let's get um, stage 19 prepared and I'll join you in a second. So welcome back to stage 19. So as mentioned in the intro, with this one, 
the um, in this stage and the next, new and previously assembled hull panels start to form the superstructure around the upper source of skeleton. So what we're basically going to do in this stage is I believe we make um, a couple of additional panels up. But we're also going to start attaching some of the panels made in the previous videos to the saucer section skeleton. It's going to be quite a lengthy process. Um, what I've actually got, I've actually got a set of tweezers that I have um, cured from my girlfriend to help me with the windows. Quite a few people have pointed out in the comments that that's quite a good idea to have a set of tweezers on hand. So I'm going to do that for fitting some of these windows. But what I will do is I won't necessarily show you me placing all of the windows. We'll do a jump cut uh, with that because it's not the most interesting thing to watch. And because I'm concentrating, I can't really talk during it. Um, but let's get, uh, let's get started, shall we? So we've got our panel, the front there, and it's carefully removed the eight escape pod covers from their sprues and insert them into the deck panels. So we've got these here. We've got they always give you a few spares, which is nice. But it's just a matter of taking them off the sprues. And then don't necessarily think we need the uh don't need the tweezers for these. But these fit in really, really nicely. Um let me just check something. I just realised it's gotten really dark in here. It's actually pouring down outside. It just started just as I uh, started recording the video, funnily enough. Um, which is cool. I used to say, so let me just... So as I said, the red line on each pad cover should be the furthest from the tapered end of the deck panel. So let me just double check that that's, uh, that's correct. Handy that it doesn't actually show you in the... Um, Assume it means like that. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to assume that's right. So we'll just uh, we'll fit these in. And then we'll move on to the actual windows themselves. So this is always a bit of a tedious process, but it has to be done. And I always thought like maybe they could have gave you like some sort of like all in one panel that kind of shows them all, but then the model maybe wouldn't have looked quite as authentic when it was done. As you can see, we have a lot of windows to fit here. There's 22 clear windows and 22 dark windows to fit just on this panel alone. That's going to be... Um, that's a big ask, that, isn't it? Okay, so... What we have is we've got our clear panels and our dark panels. So let's see how much easier using a set of tweezers is for this. This is a, probably isn't like the set of tweezers you're meant to use with models. But we'll, we'll see. Did that go in? Yeah, that went in. That went in pretty nicely, that. Okay. So I've got to do this a lot now. So what I'm going to do, we're going to jump cut to the end of this bit when it's all, when everything's on. Um, and I will join you again when all of the windows are in. See you in a minute. 
Okay, so we are back, and now we have all of the lights fitted into this little section. And I'm moving up very, very gingerly right now because I don't want to disturb it too much. So one of the interesting things that it asked you to do is across these four, it asked you to actually... Let me just get a light on there. That doesn't help too much. But what it actually asked me to do was uh, attach a sticker along here to make sure these four lights were held down. Uh, the one thing I will say is thank you to anyone who mentioned using tweezers. It made it ten times faster. Um, let me just try and move this uh, just a little bit again. Um, yeah, the tweezers made it so much quicker, and I'm very, very thankful for that. So the next stage is a little bit of a tricky slash awkward one. We're using the wondrous world of LEDs again. Um, but what it kind of asks us to do is, for the LEDs themselves, we want to bend them uh, 90 degrees. Kind of like that. Um, which, you know, that isn't too tricky. Um, but then it's just a matter of getting this panel onto here without disrupting too much. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to... Um, I'm going to pop these in here so we get a bit more of a 90 degree angle which should help it immensely oh I'm actually showing you that so I'm going to pop that in there give it a 90 degree angle you can kind of see the LEDs are bent like that I've kind of found that you know now that we're doing that with each of them it has made things a little bit easier um, but what we will want to do is, if I can actually keep this in shot, probably best to attach them like that. And then the aim would be to just kind of place it onto the panel uh, straight down like that. So hopefully that won't be too tricky what i'll do actually is i'm going to bend these just a little bit more past the 90 degrees just to kind of give it a little bit more of grip of a grip but we're going to put that down there for the moment put that down there nice and securely because we're going to need some bp screws so i want to make sure they're prepared and i've got at least one on the screwdriver for it um, but yeah, the LEDs are always like, I always find them a bit fiddly, but someone did suggest using, um, glue, like a sort of modeling glue to help keep them down. And that should have been advice I've heeded, but I've never really been out to get anything like that. So hopefully what we can do, if we set that up like that, we can just move that along nicely line it up very very carefully and we go straight on and let's oh god my hand is trembling right i don't know why my hand was shaking so much there we put the bp screw in and let's get the other bp screw in It's one reason why I've never really been great at modelling stuff is because my hands do tend to shake quite a bit when it comes to um, fine control. But also, you know, you have to realise doing this on a camera for people, no matter how few of you actually do watch this, um, it's still the realisation of what they, these videos do get, like 50 to 100 views each. So I know there are quite a few people who might see me. Uh, so that does make me a bit nervous. But those BP screws are secured. The LEDs are in, so let's we can get them up to the more 90 degree angle. Don't think it really matters too much because we will. You've seen it, right? That's in. I'm happy with that. So the next stage, let's pop that over there. Let's get the old faithful of uh, Marillion live at St David's to keep that pinned down. The next stage, now take two more deck panel light pieces and angle their bulbs as before. Plug the bulbs into the end of the yellow and white cables 
into the square slots. Okay. And, and that should do that. And then we need to use the BP screws again. So what we want. So we got that there like that. Come on. I got that there like that. So again, it's just a simple process. Bend it by 90 degrees. There we go. So now I'm going to go get a hat. So like many over the last year, um, I have lockdown hair. And I'm funny about barbers for some reason. So I'm actually waiting until I go down to visit my parents because there's a barber that they have, a hairdresser that comes to the house and they're going to sort out my hair. It's just a matter of like trust and, I don't know, general anxiousness about things like that. It might seem silly to some, but I do just have a general anxiety about people and services for some reason. Um, so that'll be when I finally get rid of a bit of my lockdown hair. I've got quite long hair at the moment, shoulder length. Um, I'm not getting all of it cut off because I kind of like having it like this, but um, it is it does get in the way because I've got like the fringe and stuff. Um, so the next stage here, we're going to take the um, the yellow and white one as it mentions there, and we're going to push it. So we're going to do this side first, the right hand side. I'm just going to push that in. Gonna gently push that in. Um, doesn't seem to want to. I can lift this up actually, can't I? So Oh, I see. I know, that did very, very little to help it. Do I need to loosen that up a little bit so that I can lift it? I think I might, you know. That's better. Right, that's actually in now. So do we have to do the same? We have to do the same for the other side, don't we? So let's get another one. Yes, first of all, we'll see if that one actually fits in there neatly. Naturally, it doesn't, as we kind of expected. Let's lift that up just a little bit. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing there. And that's... Uh... Disturbing it too much. There we go. Right, that's in. Bum, 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 bum. Just double check that side to make sure everything is okay. Yeah, everything is still... Absolutely fine there. But what we need to do now is just screw in the rest of these little panels. So let's get this back in sight for you all. One. Didn't properly yet. I'm 
one goes in nicely. As things go, this was actually the smoothest one to pop the um, to pop the LEDs in. It might just be because over the course of doing so many of these, I've gotten used to it by now and learnt the little tricks. Also kind of learnt to not be as frightened of breaking it. Uh, because now that I've actually tested lights and stuff, I see they are a bit more durable than I kind of expect. That didn't go so well. Let's, let's just get that in. Do, 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 do. Right, that's in. One more BP screw to go. Right, and there we have it. That is steps one through steps A to C of um, this stage. So what do we have next? Okay, so this is the exciting step. Let me just get rid of this plastic that's scattered around. Exciting and a little bit nerve-wracking. So let me just read what it says here. Retrieve your upper saucer skeleton, last used in stage 17. Slot the completed deck panel assembly onto the front center of the saucer skeleton. And slide the cables through as shown right and below. So there we have the upper skeleton. What we want is to lay it down nicely. We also want to take the uh, book so I can read it. So this is going to be pretty interesting. So what we want to do, we want to thread everything through. So this goes over there under that. As does that one. And this one goes through there. So we've sort of got that now. And then it's a matter Goes in like that. Oh. Okay. So they go underneath. So these go underneath that panel. And then underneath there. And those are in. And that one goes underneath that one. So they should just fit. Nicely. I think what I want to do now is flip it over. Ugh. Yeah, okay. So we want to flip it over now. Make sure it's not tangled anymore. That one too. Looks about right. That seems about right as well. Ok, 
Okay, so one of them will definitely hover a bit more over than the other. Okay, I think I've got that now. Yep. So it kind of loops around a little bit to thread it through. Right, well, what we're going to have to do then, that looks about right. And then it's the matter if we need these DP screws in here. So let me go find them. DM screws, there we go, the DP screws. So you can see this is a, this is one of the sections that was kind of, I was looking forward to this, but I realised it probably wouldn't be the smooth process that I expected. So it's not too bad, I hope. So we've got a DP screw attached to it. Put the magazine back up there. What we want, we want to try and get them. That one is coloring onto it now. This one's going on to it now. Okay, that's the bit attached. So what it wants me to do now is it wants me to flip this over again. Just get these at the 90 degree angle. Oh, have a look at that, there we go. That's um, something is starting to take shape. So I think that LED is meant to go in there like that. This little... This is weird because these LEDs don't really seem to um, attach to anything. And they don't seem to be glued down by anything, but... I don't think that really matters. Okay, right. The two LEDs are in. Oh, they'll probably... There'll probably be more panels in the future. For them. So as long as they, they're secure as well, it won't be hard to keep them in line. Right, so next step, we take all three of these. Yeah, that one has kind of popped out already. These have popped out, but I assume what can happen is when we come to fit the next panel on top, we can sort of go, oh, okay, we... Uh, It'll keep these in place, yeah. I'll just put it on top. So as long as they've got like some soft solid ground, let me try and get that again. So I understand why they do certain things what they do, but I also have to admit it's super super weird the way they do things. It's like quite a bizarre way of doing it. I understand that when you get the panel next to this, like on top of it, it'll keep the LED in place. But for now, it's sort of a losing battle. 
to make sure it's kept in place. And yeah, the next in the next few steps we will see that build up. Right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna because this is just gonna end up being a bit fiddly again. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump cut to um well actually I'm gonna move on to the next phase. Which is the L-shaped hull section we built earlier. So what we need to do next is with these in place, we need to tie a sticker around these so that they're all kind of um, kept organised. So I'm going to do that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump cut ahead to when we've got a few more of these panels on because it's just going to be very much the same process. And I'll join you again when we are at the end of um, fitting all of them. So I shall see you in a moment. Okay, so welcome back. We've just finished step E of this. So as you can see, we've now got three of the panels on. So sorting these out and threading the cables through the saucer section skeleton is really, really difficult. Uh, something I struggled with massively. And that was just because uh, the order in which you do it in and how they tell you to put on the screws just feels a little bit off. And that might just be down to me. Uh, it's one of those cases though, but now that I've done it once, I definitely do feel like I shouldn't have too many difficulties doing it again. The one thing I will say is weird is I don't like the way you have to put this in, although it does kind of tend to stay in there when you're putting it on. It does feel a bit flimsy, but now we have actually got three of the panels on. So we've still got a few bits left of this stage. And what I am going to do is I am going to just release this stage on its own. And then the other stage is probably as a shorter video because we've still got um, you know, step F, G, and then H and I to do for stage 19. And it's already taken me um, over an hour to do this, which won't be reflected in the video. But uh, yeah, definitely going to um, set aside stage 19 and record this, um, the rest of it, another day. But hopefully... Uh, this should give you a good idea. So let's uh, crack on with step F. Right, so welcome back everyone. We've made quite a bit more progress. So I just kind of wanted to bring the camera back on to show you where we were at. So what we've got now is, you can kind of see we've built together part of like that section of the saucer. And now we've got a back panel on there. And we're just fitting some screws in kind of secure this to the saucer section skeleton. There's only a couple of little bits left of this stage so then we can wrap up the video um, and like I say I'll put out the next few stages in another video because this has been quite the um, ordeal Yes, oh dear, that's the uh, that's the word for it. This has been a tough one, uh, getting this one together. Been quite a lot to take into account. Uh, but what we want now is we want some BM screws. We want one, two, three, four of them in total, actually. Is that right? Yes. Four BM screws. Let's just get these out. So this is a nice kind of like peaceful part at the end of the video. Um, I kind of expected this one to be a little bit more awkward. I uh, didn't know how tough it was going to be. But it's always the case, like I've always maintained throughout these videos, I'm not an expert. Never, you know, never done anything like this before in this level of detail. The Gundam model kits, you know, pale in comparison. The Gundam model kits that I've done anyway, because I know there's some 
uh, really complex ones out there. But up until this point, it was very, very simple, kind of clipped together, Gundam kits, uh, and Lego, really, my experience with stuff. So, certainly a uh, far cry from these sorts of shenanigans, but we're getting there, slowly and surely. We've got one, two, three, four of these panels on now. And have a look at the rest of the source section, there's a lot to go. Um, but I do expect that it's going to be one of those things that, because now I've learned some tricks for this bit, um, I expect it'll be easier next time round. The one thing I will say, if you are building the, if you are building this and you're doing this bit, take it nice and slow when it comes to threading the cables around and maybe read a step or two ahead so you can see where the other cables will go. Um, just so you know which order to get them round. It was quite a bit of weirdness with these ones here because you want to put this, you put this one in first and this one in second but this one needs to be on the right hand side, this one needs to be on the left hand side but because you put this one in first and this one in second, there's a little bit of awkwardness there. Um, so be prepared to loosen the screws again after you've secured it down just to be able to swap stuff around again. Um, and just be, like I say, take it nice and slow. Don't rush it. Uh, that's kind of what I've been quite careful to do with this myself. Because uh, I know this is kind of a bit of a crucial stage. So I didn't want to rush anything here. I didn't want to running ahead it's kind of why i read the instructions a couple of times before doing it and i still had some difficulties with it um because it just is by its very nature quite awkward so we've got all of those in now um, and what we want to do we want to take don't want to take that one don't want to take that one That one, and that one, and what we want to do, is you can find them again, oh there they are, I'm going to take these stickers, and just pop that on and round. There. Okay, now they're grouped together. These are ones we did earlier. And then we've just got the lawn cable on its own there. I don't care about that one for the moment. Now the next step, the next step on here. is to test the lights out which we're not going to do in this step we're going to move straight on to step h so step h is the dorsal phaser array into the recess so we've got the dorsal phaser array Feels pretty good to take that up. It's very, very half built. Still, uh, still a long way to go before Picard can uh, be satisfied with this one. We'll pop that in, and then flip it over. I use my thumb to keep that in place. And what we want to do now. We want some DP screws. Yeah. 
I still can't believe this is uh, at this stage. It's art, you know. I'm I'm stunned by it. But like I say, still a long, long way to go. Um, and as always, you know, please let me know in the comments below how it's going for you. Are you up to this stage yet? Have you done this stage? How did you find it? I keep seeing like a few comments every now and then of so um, someone saying, "Oh, I've uh, I've just got ordered this myself." So I'm really keen to know how you are coming along with it. Um, especially for a few of you who I've seen like a first time buyer. I've seen a few of you mention um, you've bought some of the other ones as well. I think someone mentioned they bought the Ecto One. Uh, how would they, how was that one? I'm not a huge Ghostbusters fan, um, so you know it was one that I loved the look of, but it wasn't something I could ju I would justify spending the money for. Um, but yeah, let me know how that is, and I think someone mentioned they might have the DeLorean as well. Okay, so there we go. We have the first parts of the saucer section really starting to come along. Look at that, that's fantastic. Your phaser array right there, you've got the various decks. And eventually we will build up to that bridge. So what I'm going to do, we have one bit left for the battle section. So hopefully this will be quite easy. But we've got the bit that we left apart aside in a previous video. Now we've got the other skeleton. And all we need is a lovely array of BM screws. This is going to be nice and relaxing. A lovely way to end the video. Because uh, like I say, this has been an ordeal. And I... So what I'm probably going to do is I will release this video just on its own, showing stage 19. And then I'm going to record the rest of the stuff. Probably use quite a few jump cuts to get through that because it's very much the same as what I've done there. Um, and just kind of show you how that one looks in another video, probably about a week or two from now. Uh, in a way, it's kind of a good way of doing it because it means you get more steady content and it's not as long a video. Um, but if I'm being completely honest, my back is really hurting right now. I've got a really lovely uh, secret lab chair, but because of this, I'm punched forward a lot trying to sort out my desk. So, yeah, you don't really need to know that, but but yeah, we just got many BM screws to fit here, so we'll do it row by row. That's interesting. Two of the screws were joined together. So. so this is what they call, they call this the Cobra Head. I can see why. So I'm trying to think, um, just while I'm doing this, this nice sort of chill bit. Um, Star Trek news. Picard Season 2 trailer dropped. Uh, this week, this is the week I'm recording it, just uh, the other day, and um, we got a glimpse at Q in the trailer, and oh my god, so he's got his, Q's obviously um, like John Delancey, um, who I've met, and who was a lovely, lovely guy, I met him at a convention the other year back, um, and obviously, you know, it was a chance to meet Q, and I'd never met anyone out of Star Trek before. I've never thought I'd ever have the opportunity, because you have, like, Destination Star Trek and stuff, and they're quite expensive, quite far away, and my partner isn't really into Star Trek that much, so I don't really think I could convince her to go to, like, Destination Star Trek with me, and I'm not really one for going to these places on my own. Nor would I really be one for going in a massive group. I'd rather go with, like, one or two people, and then you have a bit more control over it. So I never thought I'd really get a chance to meet the Star Trek cast, but John Delancey was at Glasgow MCM. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to spend the money to get the photo opportunity and the uh, and the autograph from him. So we get to the autograph, I pick, my, um, pick the picture I want, and it was one of him tormenting Picard, which I thought, I have to get that one. And I uh, get to the queue with him, and I just said, and I said to him, um, 
oh, absolutely love you in Star Trek. And then I said, oh, how was it in Amsterdam recording um, for The Electric Castle? Um, because John Delancey had re- just recently gotten back from Holland. to He was recording a performance of something called Into the Electric Castle. He was playing in the Rater. For those who don't know, Into the Electric Castle is a rock opera by an artist. Um, it's part of the Arion Project by an artist called Ian uh, Lucasen. And all of these albums are like big rock operas. Into the Electric Castle is the premise is that Various people from across different time zones are all gathered together on a quest to find an into the electric castle. And it's, uh, they're led by the narrator, or a character called Forever of the Stars, which is kind of like an omnipotent being. And it's a wonderful rock opera. It's fantastically cheesy in places, but that's kind of, you know, kind of the point, you know, it's various influences and such. And he actually played the narrator in live performance of it. And he, he his eyes light up and he goes, oh, were you there? And I went, unfortunately not, couldn't afford it. And he goes, oh, here, let me show you some of the pictures from my phone. So he just takes his phone out while he's signing the autograph and starts showing me, like, the pictures from, like, um, the performance and stuff when he was there. And I just thought that was fantastic. And it was so lovely to meet him. And you only get, like, a limited amount of time. You don't get to chat properly with them. But it's one of those moments that, you know, it means a lot. And it's something that I'll always remember. You know, you always remember when someone goes the extra mile. And these people, they have no obligation to do that. They are just there to sign autographs. But the fact that he did that, it, it meant a hell of a lot. So it was really lovely to meet him. But, yeah, he looks fantastic in it. He's playing an aged-up cue, uh, kind of, I guess, to go alongside Picard, obviously being older. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine... Of I miss one? Oh, there, 10. Okay, so there's 10. And with my little story about John Delancey and all the Q looking lovely in season two of Picard, um, we are at the end of stage 19, finally. It took so long to get here. Next video, we will do 20, um, uh, 21 and 22. As you can see here, plainly from stage 20, it's more windows and more fitting that to the saucer section. So it is going to... Right, we've got we've got stage twenty, which will be one more panel at the source section. Twenty one, which is new battery box, and also another bit to the source section, and twenty two, which is another bit, and making sure the new battery box works. So there's still quite a bit to milk out of this uh, issue. Could even be three videos, maybe twenty one, twenty and twenty one next, and then twenty two. But for now. Thank you all very much for watching. That's just like the skeleton of the cobra head done. Let's get the uh, other one in shot again. Eh? So yeah, thank you all very much for watching. I'll leave you with that and I'll see you in the next video.